Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this fourth, or no, it's the fifth one, isn't it? Uh, fifth Stu and A, uh, no, Stu tutorials. I'm already mixing up my my Stu mates, and of course, I'm joined Should by the wonderful again? Stu again. Hello, it's good to be no, here. <laughs> there you go. Um, and we, we're gonna we're gonna talk about a new tutorial now. It's we we finished up uh, learning the ropes. Am I correct? Did You're we do, perfect. Did, Keep going. Yeah, we finished. I'm, I'm just, I'm just double checking. Please interrupt me if I'm, I'm saying anything wrong. There's so many tutorials we've had. Um, so it's quite nice. Some people are actually calling me what beard. Yeah, we're not even halfway. This is okay. fine. Um, so far, I've, I've seen someone else also ask if we fixed our freezing. We should be fine. I don't think there are any ISP issues right now. So, hopefully, we are in the clear. Um, but before we get in and start talking about uh, the next tutorial, Beneath Cursed Tides? No, that's a no, quest. What am I thinking? <laughs> we'll get that. And we'll let Motsu do the, inter we'll let do okay. the introduction. Um, <laughs> but we do currently have a new Twitch Prime offer. There you go. Such a smooth transition. Uh, and currently our Twitch Prime offer is 20 Treasure Hunter Keys, 400 Ring Coins, and 80 hours of ice. So if you've got your Twitch Prime, make sure to redeem that. It's a nice, nice little package. Uh, so make sure you use that. Uh, and then without further ado, let's just forget everything I've been rambling on about so far already, and let's get into this tutorial, I would say. So take it away, Stu. Thank you. Alrighty, welcome back to this tutorial series, a retrospective review of RuneScape's historic tutorials. This week, we begin our journey through Unstable Foundations, the fourth version of RuneScape's tutorial. If you created your account between 2009 and 2011, and recall a red dragon fighting a white knight in a cellar, this was likely the beginning of your adventure. Before we continue, I'd like to just address a couple of points from rereading last week's chat. Um, a player asked why we're wasting paid hours doing this live stream. So I just wanted to reassure you, I create the slides and the script for these streams outside of working hours, and to be honest, the preparation eats into my weekends and evenings quite a bit. Uh, also, we broadcast the these streams. Too. Sure. Can I interrupt quickly? You shouldn't do that yeah. on your free time, and you should do that during work. There you go, okay. please continue. <laughs> All right, I'll see what I can do about that then. But at the moment, that's what I've been doing. And we broadcast these streams after we finish work for the day, so rest, rest assured these streams are having no impact on development other than reaping the benefits of this research. I also noticed that several players wondered why we're doing this series, and a big opportunity to tell you about that. So near the start of lockdown, community management sent out a request to developers to help expand our streaming schedule now that we're all working from home. So I volunteered to create an additional weekly stream. Preparing these in-depth retrospectives of RuneScape tutorials is my contribution to ensure that we have a permanent record of previous new player experiences and a better understanding of what worked and what didn't work to inform future development. While I've played and researched our tutorials a lot, I haven't had the opportunity to do so to this level of fine detail. I want to ensure we continue to learn from the past. I figured it might be interesting, maybe even entertaining, to bring you all along on my journey. On a more personal level, these streams are a way for me to practice and improve my presentation skills, use my words during our current period of social distancing, and get better at compiling footage. Also, I just enjoy talking about my area of interest and sharing my passion with other RuneScape players. So moving on to the disclaimer. This stream is going to discuss a specific tutorial from RuneScape's past in painstaking detail. We're not showing off a new tutorial or hyping any future content. I'm unable to see the chat, but my lovely assistant, Mod Puerky, will keep an eye on your questions and will occasionally stop for some relevant stew and a along the way. If you're just here for the Lootscape, that's cool. I love you anyway, and you can't stop me. <laughs> Before I get started, <laughs> uh, any questions from the chat, Luke? Uh, yes, there was one uh, from Santa Simons. Was like, is there going to be a quiz today? Um, maybe we'll have some questions along the way, but in no form or shape, it's a quiz. If you're referring to a monthly pub quiz, we do that the first. Yes, we do that the first uh, Thursday stream of each month. So that's going to be another two weeks uh, before that will be. Yeah, so, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but now we'll just continue with the lovely tutorial. If you've got any questions, like Stu already says, put them in the chat. I'll try and pick them up uh, and we'll see where we can get. Uh, I will stay away from as many of the, the content questions as possible uh, because we're talking about tutorials today. Um, 
so yeah, that's 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 my kind of my bit as well. And then I suggest we just get started. Okay. Um, are you getting any pop off my microphone? By the way, I heard a little bit of uh, popping noises while I was talking. Um, is it annoying? Should I try adjust it a little bit? Or is it? Ah, uh, you're okay. fine. Okay, cool. All right, so with that out of the way, there are nearly 90 slides in this tutorial deck, so let's get cracking. Uh, first, let's establish how we got to Unstable Foundations. The Stuori so far, if you'll allow me to stretch my gimmick to its breaking point. When Andrew Gower, the original Elder God, gave birth to RuneScape in January 2001, there was no tutorial. You started in Lumbridge and you were left to your own devices. In September 2002, Tutorial Island was added to RuneScape Classic in all its sprightly splendor. We explored Classic in our very first tutorial episode. Next slide, please. In March 2004, RuneScape Classic was replaced with RuneScape 2, software rendered in possibly the most glorious 3D graphics that a Java thin client could muster. The leap to a whole new scripting language and 3D rendered environment brought with it a new Tutorial Island. We explored Tutorial 1 and contrasted it to the current recreation of Tutorial Island in our second episode. In September 2006, various tutors were added, mostly to Lumbridge, that provided basic equipment, advice, and later jobs to aid players fresh from Tutorial Island. In July 2008, Learning the Ropes, known internally as Tutorial 2, replaced Tutorial Island, featuring various tutors in its quarantine co and its quarantine copy of Lumbridge. Despite the many months of hard work that created it, Learning the Ropes was active for only two weeks, upon which Tutorial Island was reinstated. Due to this narrow window, footage for this massively comprehensive tutorial is quite hard to come by. We explored the draconic behemoth of Learning the Ropes over our previous two episodes. In September 2009, Tutorial 3, Unstable Foundations, replaced Tutorial Island. A reimagining of learning the ropes that learned from its predecessor, Unstable Foundations remained the tutorial for nearly three years. September 2009 was also my three-year anniversary of working at Jagex. I was developing for Mixcape, probably rewriting at least one of its four tutorials at the time, and I think it was around that time it got rebranded as Stellar Dawn. In May 2010, the task system was released. This consumed and superseded achievement diaries and the objective system added with Unstable Foundations. Tasks were integrated into Unstable Foundations as its guidance mechanism. This was then followed by additional optional tasks that introduced Lumbridge, starting an Explorer Jack's house. In May 2011, Unstable Foundations was completely removed, supplanted as the tutorial by the Lumbridge introductory tasks. But that is another story and will be told another time. Um, any questions before I move on? Uh, well, I'll take the... I've got two one, two of them. Uh, the first one uh, comes from uh, Homo Kevin, and he asks, how many streams can we do to talk about tutorials, you'd think? We've already got five. How many more do we think we've got, got to go if we have to do an estimate? I'd say we're about the halfway mark at this point. Um, mm -hmm. I'd say that we're probably going to be uh, doing at least two episodes on Unstable Foundations. Although it's a shorter tutorial, I've made about the equivalent amount of um, script and slides as Learning the Ropes. Uh, after that, we have the Lumbridge introductory tasks. We have the Troll War Zone, including an earlier version of, of that. Uh, we have Ashdale. We have um, and its path system. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting one before Tutorial Island. Did we go to Tutorial Island after that? You've got me on the spot. Oh, you're now. the expert. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Tutorial Island, then the Birth of Paths. I'm pretty sure that, that's how it goes. So yeah, we're, we, we're only halfway there. So it'll be a while yet, I'm afraid. Um, mm -hmm. I hope you're enjoying the journey so far. Uh, I think the players that are still here definitely are. Uh, I just saw a couple <laughs> of conversations about uh, our accents and, and, and stuff. Uh, they were talking about South Africa. And I don't know if they're referring to me or you. Uh, but I'm Dutch. I don't know if you want to elaborate on where, where, where your uh, accent comes from, Stu, or where your, yeah, where your origins mind. come from. Sure. Go so I was it. born in England. Um, my parents immigrated when I was three years old to South Africa. So I spent about 20 years there. I've been back in um, in um, England uh, since I was 20. So that's another 20 years. So I guess it's not really rubbed off all that much. 
Um, but yeah, that explains where I come from. And I learned Afrikaans while I was over there. Um, I was absolutely terrible at the language, but um, it does sound a little bit like Dutch to some extent. So maybe that's where part mm -hmm. of, of that impression comes from. I, I guess I could still hear a little bit of South African in your voice, uh, which I think is pretty funny. Um, yeah, I, I tried to moderate last... it a little bit, but it's still there. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to not have a very Dutch accent as well, but I, I, stink, I think I still feel quite hardly or quite quite badly that as well. Um, the last question I had for now is what is your favorite tutorial? Uh, and then we're not just talking about RuneScape, but in any game. Favorite tutorial in any game? Wow, that's an interesting one. Ooh, you put me on the spot there. Um... Um, I like making it tough for you. Yeah, you do. Um, I'm going to have to come back to that one, I'm afraid. I can't actually All right. think of a, an, an, another game that really jumps out to me. I must admit, I've been focusing on, on doing these tutorials for such such a long long time that I, I don't really have anything else fresh in my mind at the moment. Um, but in terms of favorite one that we've done so far, um, I kind of have a, a soft spot for the Lumbridge introductory tasks, actually. Um, I like the notion of your, a series of things to do out in the world and you're explore, exploring under a lot of your own agency rather than things that are too tightly locked into a particular bubble. Um, so that's kind of my preference. Uh, the Troll okay. Warzone though was a lot of fun. Um, when I started playing RuneScape again, it was when the Troll Warzone came back and I really enjoyed how it got you directly into um, leveling the skills in, in a, your starting zone. Everything was very easy to access and um, transparent. So I definitely like that structure. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, I was thinking myself about the answers well to the question. I don't know if I ever got a favorite tutorial. There are quite a few tutorials in other games where I like certain elements of. Um, and I've not played that many tutorials on RuneScape myself, so I kind of have to... I definitely prefer the the, the nostalgic tutorial island over the, the Ashdale mm -hmm. one, personally. Um, but that's kind of as far as my opinion on, on our tutorials goes. Um, but without fair. further ado, shall we get started? Sure thing. So, returning to September 2009. Mixcape was intended to alpha release that year, so I was deep into many months of serious crunch at the time. I didn't play any internal builds of Unstable Foundations or really have much recollection of it other than playing the new tutorial when it released for research purposes. So I'll rely again on the glorious god Ash to explain what was on the minds of RuneScape's developers at the time. So why did we replace Tutorial Island in the first place? How can you improve on perfection? As Ash notes, Tutorial Island had some problems. A significant proportion of new accounts dropped out before completing it, and retention of new users during and after Tutorial Island was, and to an extent still is, quite low. Tutorial Island teaches you about most of the free-to-play skills, and you, have, and you learn how to use them by becoming familiar with an island to which you cannot return and Tutorial Island requires you to learn about these things in a specific order. Whether or not you're interested in woodcutting or fire making or fishing or baking bread or questing or mining or smithing or combat or making money or prayer or magic, you have to learn about all of these skills before you get to play RuneScape. And you're first to forced to first learn about these in, in a particular order while your interest is potentially steadily waning. Will you remember everything you learned when it becomes relevant to you? Then, as the game grows and becomes more complex week by week, with new skills and new features, there's more and more to understand, which quickly becomes overwhelming. So, as Ash tells us, a new tutorial was commissioned, Learning the Ropes, that detailed all the free-to-play skills and all the aspects of the interface at the time. It learned from Tutorial Island. It included non-linearity, non which is hard to say, so you hopefully wouldn't feel quite so railroaded. And to familiarize new players with the starting zone, learning the ropes included a lot of time in a quarantine copy of Lumbridge, rather than a tutorial island to which you cannot return. As we explored in our previous two episodes, learning the ropes did a lot of things right. It conveyed many of the core mechanics in efficient, active, and engaging ways, especially in its initial chapters. There were examples of strong user experience principles that we can definitely take into the future. Its story was compelling and uncomplicated, with evolving elements that fit the RuneScape brand, grounded in medieval fantasy with a sardonic twist. But Learn the Ropes was detailed, it was thorough. 
it was heavily guided, so it wasn't, ap wasn't apparent that you could skip parts of the tutorial, or that you had more freedom to choose chapters than it appeared. And in my opinion, it had some issues with pacing and player agency that contributed to a declining feeling of investment in your role and your actions. As Ash states, learning the ropes could take over an hour to complete, and the vast majority lost interest in RuneScape before ever reaching the real lumbridge. Tutorial completion dropped like a stone. Now, there were other factors. Botting was an issue in those days, and a new tutorial obviously broke those bots. They could have identified the drop-off points and specifically addressed those to smooth out the flow. But the decision was made to remove learning the ropes and switch back to Tutorial Island. This then provided lead time to consider what happened and learn from learning the ropes, and design and develop a new tutorial, which released the following year. Any questions? Uh, I've got a couple. Uh, I'll do the, cool. the, the slightly rest, less uh, related ones to two tutorials first. Um, I saw someone swap quite a bit of GP dupe uh, in game. Uh, we've already talked about that in Tuesday's live stream, as well as put a very nice statement about that uh, on Reddit uh, in a thread that got quite popular. So I would advise to to have a read at that. Um, but it, it's we're all good basically. Uh, I think that's the TLDR, uh, and we are still investigating and, and taking uh, as much of the, the potential gold that got into the game out of the game. Um, so that's that. Uh, let me remove that one. There was another question about Twitch Prime uh, and that someone claimed it two days ago, still hasn't received it. Um, what I would say is make sure your account is linked. Um, and if it, if it is, just double check it by re revisiting that page uh, and potentially disconnect and reconnect it. That should hopefully fix it. You probably shouldn't have to wait two days otherwise. It should be a day at most. Uh, so I would advise you to do that. And now we go to the tutorial questions, uh, Stu. Uh, there have been quite a few tutorials in RuneScape. Um, were there any weird bugs that tutorials cast further down the line? So like something that you something that you get into a weird state or something by doing something funky in the tutorial and that, that affects you longer term in the game? Uh, yeah, that's something we certainly have to be very mindful of um, because the players can be at any point in one of our old tutorials when we, when we then introduce a new one we have to uh, factor um, that state into account subsequently so it's not like we can completely remove all of the framework of a previous tutorial because we need to retain your variable state to know where you were and consequently respond to that to then bounce you into the next tutorial or eject you from that tutorial into the main game try to align you with something similar to your previous experience um, so that's something we certainly have to be careful about. Um, and as the game continues to evolve, um, that can like have, have a knock-on effect where certain states that you're in can um, require special cases. Uh, I can't say I can really say that any, there were any particularly fascinating fun bugs that were created from that. Um, but e even now we occasionally find someone com comes back from a very, very old tutorial and um, we need to add in some kind of a, a case to, to handle some outlier for them. So, um, yeah, building on that foundation is a, is a tricky thing. <laughs> so we actually had like people somewhat getting stuck in the tutorial, for example. Uh, not so much um, stuck, just in a kind of an unusual state. Um, mm. Like like uh, they, well, they they log into the same same map square, or maybe they might have got to a, a particular part that their map square that the, the what wasn't um, caught, um, ensuring that that uh, they get intercepted and, and um, moved elsewhere. Um, that their mm -hmm. account may have been configured in a, in a rather strange way that doesn't apply at the moment, so we might have to add new data to them to compensate. Okay, it's it's interesting though to hear. Um, but yeah, please please continue. I'll, I'll get us okay. some more questions from the chat for the next time. Thank you. According to the news post that released with Unstable Foundations, Tutorial Island and the Lumbridge Tutors were not giving the best first impression to new players. Much of the information they gave wasn't of interest until later in the game or came across as too wordy and boring to be effective. We found that most players prefer to get stuck into the game and figure things out by actually playing. So as Ash says, we tried again. Unstable Foundations was a shorter introduction to RuneScape than learning the ropes. Focus tests took about 25 minutes to complete. 
Unstable Foundations concentrated on the basic controls, game concepts, with less emphasis on teaching each skill. It covered world interaction, using things, picking up and equipping items, solving simple inventory puzzles. User interface, the essential side panels, your quest journal, your world map. Then your skill levels and their requirements, how to train either of two gathering skills to raise your level, and finally, the advisor and objective systems that were introduced at the time. And this tutorial is framed in a short story about helping a knight to kill a dragon and save a dashing elderly gentleman in distress. The release of Unstable Foundations in September 2009 brought with it several additions. An objective system, a way to set earning a level in a skill or completing a quest as an objective. It was originally intended to recommend activities and give new and experienced players a goal to focus on and track their progress so that you weren't forced to learn all these skills at the beginning. Also an advisor system to provide guidance when you wanted it, such as where to find a shop with useful items or how to train certain skills. Much of the information that was taught in Tutorial Island were reframed as interactive mini tutorials accessed through the advisor system. The system released with support for only basic activities with plans to cover more skills and activities in the future. The starting area was also defined with the rest with let me start again. The starting area was also defined with the release of Unstable Foundations. Encompassing Lumbridge, Varrock, and Draenor, this was the area in which the advisor's mini tutorials could be accessed. Guards and gates were placed at the edge of the starting area so new players were aware of the safe borders. Players with 60 total level could freely pass through, while lower level players needed to confirm that they were leaving the starting area. Finally, since the advisor's many tutorials now covered the same information, most of the, the tutors and their jobs were removed from Lumbridge, with the tools they provided now available for free from certain shops. Wilfred, the woodcutting skill cape seller, also moved from Lumbridge to Falador. The Lumbridge job system was completely removed in May 2010. In this update, the air altar also moved into the starting area from south of Falador to southwest of Rock, and various services were also added to the starting area, such as a fishing shop in Lumbridge, a tanner in Varrock, and a pottery in Drano Village. According to metrics at the time, Unstable Foundations achieved better completion rates than the version of Tutorial Island in 2009 so it took pole position as the tutorial for the next three years. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I wrote down, uh, I've got two for you in particular. Um, what are your thoughts on, uh, this, is like, this is related to tutorials, like this was based on the discussion in the chat, they were talking about uh, Ashto a little bit earlier and that someone mm -hmm. was kind of put off by doing, by starting to play RuneScape because he had to go through the tutorial again. Um, mm -hmm. We do have an option to just skip the tutorial. Um, what is your thought on allowing players basically to, to skip the tutorial from the beginning? Um, yeah, I'm personally a, a strong advocate of that. Because um, as you say, you could be someone who is already familiar with the game and you're creating a, excuse me, you're creating a new account. Um, you know, why force you to go through those, those things if, if you're already familiar with the core mechanics, especially if you've played this particular tutorial before? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm all for um, adding in a skip tutorial button. That's also why I put in uh, these gates in between the sections of Tutorial Island so that you could bypass certain stages if you just want a refresher of certain aspects, but um, you can otherwise bypass the rest. So I'm trying to give the player that freedom. Uh, and then if you're a new player, you're less likely to know about those, those things um, and you'll probably go through the, the normal flow. So I think it's a win-win. Yeah. Okay. Um... The other one that I wrote down, this was a question from point 13. Um, so most of the tutorials are completely geared towards new players. Um, and a lot of those new players uh, are probably also people that played the game quite a while ago. Uh, so they were lapsed and they are now returning. Um, and they know the base part of the game, but they're still interested in learning things about the action bars and, and the new interface. Have we ever considered creating an advanced tutorial for those kinds of people? Yeah, so I'd say that, that that's a different user set. Um, so what, we, what we've got here, these tutorials I'm talking about, these are ones that are designed for a completely completely new user, someone who isn't, uh, it assumes that people aren't already familiar with, with RuneScape and tries to give you the fundamentals to be able to play it. Um, what I think they're talking about is, is more like a returner funnel. Um, 
something that for when someone comes back to the game, maybe they're a long lapsed user, they, they come back, then they need, they already know about a lot of the, the foundational elements and they want to know what's changed since they, they uh, last uh, um, played the game. It's a, it's a very um, different uh, user type. Uh, and the, I think that's a return of funnel is something we could definitely benefit from focusing on. Um, things like giving them more uh, awareness of how to access the legacy interface features, for example, um, or um, directing them to uh, means of tutorializing certain mechanics like like, like combat. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, that the priority that's been given to me is more focused on, on new users, but I, I think that uh, ret returners, I think, are a very important thing to factor into. Uh, even if that's only that we try to direct you towards um, external um, guides or um, like, like for example, the uh, returning player videos that were, were created uh, recently. Um, some of the, those things uh, can, they don't necessarily need to be covered in game, um, particularly if, if you're already familiar, you're kind of an advanced user as it were already, but you just need to catch up on what's happened since last time. Um, the wiki handles a lot of that, that, that as well. Um, they have um, a lot of good guides on um, ret for ret returning users and, and uh, catching up on the most recent updates, things sorted with in chronological order, so you can uh, look back at those. Um, yeah, I, I think it would be a good thing to add uh, more, with, particularly within a return of funnel. I agree. Mm -hmm. All right. I, th I think what you're saying make, makes sense to me as well. Um, I saw Gold Hot Wave also asked whether this is pre-recorded. Uh, I hope that you now know it is actually pre-recorded because we were assuming that you were going to ask that question. So that's why we're addressing it right now, at, specifically at this this time. So I think we're good on that. Um, glad that's sorted uh some people in chat this is just a, a fun fact for you Stu. um yeah, sure. with return of funnel they are uh, creating uh, associations with sausages and 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 stuff which is a bit interesting i was not really thinking of that um yeah i, I can't say i can make that logical leap <laughs> myself but when i read through the chat later on i'm sure it'll all make sense um yeah, there was uh the, uh, the, the other thing that i want to address uh there are bits about uh our communication I've, as I've been reiterating on a couple of other streams, that it's just something uh, we are trying to improve and, and we're talking about that and how we want to, to, to make some of those improvements. Uh, one of the things that is worth knowing is that we will be doing a Q&A next week uh, and not on Tuesday, but on Thursday on the, the tutorial slot, which means like, oh my God, there's no tutorials. We've got you covered. We're moving that to the Tuesday. Um, so we have a Q&A on Thursday, uh, 5 p.m. as well. 5 p.m. BST, so that's 4 p.m. game time, is it? Yes, 4 p.m. game time. Yeah. Uh, and we'll create a Q&A thread uh, for that after the stream. So make sure if you've got any questions, uh, whether that is uh, what we say regarding a roadmap, regarding any of the updates, um, you can uh, ping those to us in there, put them in there, and we'll answer as many of those questions as we can. So that's that. Uh, I answered the question, I asked the questions. I think we could. Once again, if you've got questions about any of the things that Stru says here as well, about tutorials and generals, uh, pop them down in the chat and I'll, I'll try and read them to Stu. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so now we can finally move on to character creation after my very long preamble. So there was an earlier version of character creation in use in some of the Unstable Foundation videos I found. Um, this one was quite similar to Learn of the Ropes, but with all the tabs compacted down into a single screen and a preset feature. Whenever you select a different model, on the right there's also an animation of a curtain that glides over your avatar to mask your tra transition, and then your avatar performs some kind of charming emote that shows off their new threads. Some of you may remember this. Uh, but this is the character creation most of you probably remember from this era really sleek, clean, bright color scheme. You pick from a range of preset appearances to demonstrate the variety of skills in RuneScape. There's a clear statement up front that you're not choosing a class, but given how most MMORPGs have you pick a class and you're locked into it, I imagine they were fighting against expectations. When you pick a character, there's this really great animation of a background set piece representing their skill dropping down into place with a flourish. The character performs an animation that telegraphs the function of your chosen skill, and the props in the background animates in really characterful ways. 
I've included a pop-out here, for example, of the blacksmith's forge dropping into position. The tongs clash onto the anvil and the bucket rattles as it hits the floor. I can't do the animation justice in these static slides, and I'm trying to do the best I can with descriptions, but they're really <laughs> impactful effects. Um, especially knowing how difficult animating frames in Jagged, our animation editor, was at the time. I recommend looking up the, this character creation on YouTube. You can see our, our players picked the Slayer preset, uh, so they're holding this great big battle axe. It looks a lot like the one wielded by Jacqueline the Slayer Tutor from the Troll Warzone tutorial. A lot of the Bav, um, Berthop and Tavli tutors were based on these character models and animations. Including weapons and tools in the appearance might be confusing though because it suggests you're picking starting equipment, but it helps to emphasize the identity of each preset. Like the earlier interface I, I, we showed, it's a non-linear flow, so you can adjust your gender or your skin color at any time, and it updates on this avatar in the scene. For some of the skills, you could also choose from several costume variants to further personalize your character, but remain within style. You can just confirm and go with a style, or you can further modify your appearance. This, appro this approach means there's a broad range of potential options, which really shows off the diversity of gameplay in RuneScape. And you can, you can choose to go deeper into customization without getting bogged down in choice paralysis. I have included some more box outs of the scene selection here for comparison. And here's the modify further screen, letting you pick all the details of your hairstyle and your facial hair and its color. As well as choosing from a range of torso, leg and boots from each of the presets to mix and match and individually color them. Your avatar reacts whenever you change an aspect of their appearance. I imagine it was probably inspired by The Sims. It creates a nice positive feedback loop in response to your actions and makes your character seem much more interactive and personable. So we've done nearly 20 slides and we're finally in the game. We start with a modal pop-up in introducing the basic controls. RuneScape's control scheme is quite unique. Uh, so it's good that we're focusing on the, con on the controls right away. The pop-up covers rotating the camera, movement by walking, and movement by running. And they're listed in a nicely spaced format, simple language with distinct iconography. We usually remember pictures a lot better than words, so it's good to use icons if you can. You can't see it in a picture, but the orange left mouse button icon these pop-ups even glows to help draw the eye and to add to the visual memory of which button to press. It does cover three concepts all at once, however which may be a little overwhelming for having just arrived in the game. There's also a lot of other things going on across the screen. You're in a new environment that's partially obscured. The message box at the bottom is prompting you to talk to someone, but you first need to deal with this control pop-up. So that could be hidden until later. It's ideal to try to give the player one instruction at a time, so you're not splitting their attention. On the right-hand side, although we're only showing the options panel, there's still a lot of new icons and numbers suddenly on the screen. Even though this interface is so much simpler than the new interface system, uh, it doesn't take much to trigger, get your bigger cards ready, cognitive load <laughs> in the early stages. Consequently, with all this new information on your screen, you're unlikely to remember all three of these listed controls when you close the interface. Fortunately, they get reinforced in subsequent steps. Nowadays, we start you with run mode enabled and automatically switch you back to running when you regain enough run energy. It's very rare that you wouldn't want to run if you can. So that's a way of addressing overwhelm at its source. If you can avoid having to explain something by making the core mechanic more intuitive or require less player input, that's ideal. When you're having to use a tutorial to guide the player through something complex, your time might be better spent making that system's UX, user experience, simpler and more intuitive. The best tutorial is no tutorial. One very interesting thing about this pop-up, well, to me, is that there is no close button. You have to manually rotate your camera to close the pop-up and proceed. Uh, so make another mark on your bingo cards if you've got them, learning by doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll skip that section. Uh, is there any questions? Um, there was a, a question in relation to the, 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 the different classes. Um, 
Techhead7890 um, kind of points out this explains where those skill themed custom shirts came from though. I never learned this of customization. So my question more so of that is did we have like a specific specific cosmetics that are still in game that kind of relate back to that tutorial section or kind of that choosing your classes? Do you know that? Uh, so the character cr creation we have at the moment, um, it has kind of a, a more limited set of um, initial kit pieces that were based on, on those ones there. They, they went through an improvement pass because um, uh, the, mm -hmm. the graphical quality has, has updated since, since then and the character model has also been updated since then. Um, so there are some like older uh, deprecated uh, models from from those different variants that were made back then, mm -hmm. um, but only some of them are, are currently available because they're in the, this um, at this high level of quality that the suits the, the new character model that was added with Evolution of Combat. Um, and then, as, as I mentioned, we uh, reused those assets also on the uh, tutors in Birth Up and Tavli. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you for answering that. Uh, I no learned something new today. The other question is, uh, so we, we kind of introduced those classes and then I'm, I'm adding brackets around it because they were not really yeah. classes. And, and mm -hmm. they did, we did that to make it look like more like all the MMOs who are, are commonly have classes. Um, um, I wouldn't say that we were trying to necessarily um, imitate other MMOs. In, in fact, I think the difficulty there was that players would, would make the assumption that these are classes. Um, it was more about trying to portray the diversity basically of who your character can be. Um, mm -hmm. kind of trying to show, um, each of them is kind of visually uh, demonstrating uh, the skills in the game and all these, these different uh, skills you can engage with and all the things you can potentially be. The, the tricky thing, of course, there is that um, players may assume that they're choosing a class and they may be locked into one of those skills. Um, so there's a kind of an explanation there to try to reassure you that, that you can change your appearance anytime you want, but it's kind of fighting against an expectation, which is tricky. So, so that was more so done to to kind of defy or the, the, the counter the the expectations from the player. There, it's interesting. What are your thoughts on that? This is just a question for me. There, what are your thoughts on on trying to be as close to your other similar games, if that makes sense? Uh, so, like um, trying to to mimic how they control and all those kinds of things. Yeah, I, I think that it's a tricky one because. Uh, RuneScape has been around for a very, very long time, and it kind of forged a lot of it, its own ground back, back in, in those days. You know, a lot of the progenitors of MMOs at, at the time, and uh, RuneScape itself was uh, inspired more by uh, multi-user dungeons, you know, and, um, and adventure games. It kind of found its, its specialty and went off its, its own direction. Um, and then we have um, players that have played um, under those controls for, for 20 years, and they've become accustomed to them. So. Uh, Modifying them to move back towards um, industry standard things is good for the perspective of new users coming in. They're likely to um, adapt more easily, um, but it also may alienate the user base that we currently have. So we need to try and find that, that middle ground of modernizing without losing RuneScape's core identity and what our current users con consider to be um, foundational to, to, to what to their gameplay is. So, mm -hmm. yeah, short answer, it's good if we can, uh, but we need to be mindful of what, what RuneScape is and, and try not to deviate too far from it um, so that we don't upset the players we already have. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm in agreement with you on that. I still find it a very cool question to ask, though. Yeah. Um, those are the questions. I'll, I'll say, I've got a couple already. I've written down a couple, but I'll save them for the next uh, Stu and A section. Okay, cool. I'll forge ahead then. So uh, now we've closed that pop-up, we can see the game view and we're in the world interaction step of this controls primer. We can see that the mini map is a representation of our game view and we're in a tightly confined cellar, not unlike in Learning the Ropes. An empty room, simple shapes, we can focus on our objective. The yellow arrow under the player's feet, thanks for that feature Learning the Ropes, helps orient and direct the attention to our goal. The camera's positioned so Savant is off screen so we reinforce what you've just learned by rotating, rotating the camera so that you can see them. Then you interact with the world and you start your first conversation. Also note that it's instructing you to right click Savant and then choose to talk to him. For the first instruction, that's a little bit confusing. While it's getting you accustomed to using the mini menu, it's not necessary to follow that two-step process unless you're using a one-button mouse. 
we iterate on our tutorials quite a bit over time, adapting them as new systems are added. Content that is, is introduced that breaks the tutorial, or we get feedback that improves the flow. For example, here's a later example of the same scene, immediately after character creation. At this later stage, the task system had been implemented, and Unstable Foundations was adapted to convey its instructions through the task panel. So instead of, instead of starting with a controls pop-up, your first instruction is to open the task list, indicated by that big yellow arrow. Then camera control is covered in the description of that task. In some respects, I'd say this is a, st a step backward for the very first instruction. It's getting you to engage with the task system right away, which is good. You're getting accustomed to finding tasks that are going to be there in the future when you have free reign. Using it right from the start helps build muscle memory. But we're losing out on the nice big font and iconography of that controls pop-up and condens condensing it down into smaller text in a side panel. For the very first step, I'd have been inclined to stick to the controls pop-up. Uh, note that this newer version has also condensed the amount of information you're taught at once. It just focuses on camera rotation, one topic at a time. As before, the game reacts to your input. When you rotate the camera, it completes this task, you get a pop-up, and you proceed on to the next objective. The task descriptions are quite wordy here. There's certainly ways that this text could be condensed further to just focus on the objective by highlighting keywords using conditional properties. So only if you're using a one button mouse does it display the alternate instructions for a one button mouse, for example. Try to always keep your instructions as clear and brief as possible. So now we understand the basic controls, we start our first conversation with Savant. Character models have been improved since learning the ropes, so he's had a dashing makeover. Also, this dialogue is voiced, which is pretty cool. The very first fully voiced RuneScape tutorial. Voiceover can be a real pain in tutorials though, because we frequently have to tweak dialogue or adapt to reworked mechanics. And it's unlikely we'll be able to get the same voice actor back for pickup lines or to recreate the exact recording conditions. We also tried voicing the player characters lines in Unstable Foundations. This proved to not go down too well. Uh, players tend to have such an attachment to their character. We got feedback that they didn't like hearing a different voice than the one they had in their head. We considered providing a range of, of different uh, voice options to the player, but um, even then it seemed like we couldn't quite get the particular voice that um, players had for themselves. So that player voiceover was promptly removed. Getting back to your first conversation, Savant doesn't get a chance to introduce himself or his squire or acknowledge where you are or even who you are. After a line of dialogue, we get right into the action with a cutscene. Any questions before the cutscene? Uh, yes. First of all, thank you for, for saying that I look like Peter Parker. I, I don't see the likeliness, <laughs> but I, I, I'll take the compliment any time of day. Um, I can't unsee it now. Uh, I, don't think, I genuinely don't think we really look that similar, but that's all right. Um, this little question was got asked uh, a bit ago by 100 Pointer. Um, according to him, the Ashdale uh, map wasn't always visible on the main map. Mm -hmm. um, what's, do you know if there was a reason for that? Oh yeah, I remember that. Um, yeah, so Ashdale was mapped in a quite interesting way. Um, it, because it's uh, suspended um, above this uh, big towering um, rock area, I'm not describing it very well, mm -hmm. um, but basically you're suspended um, on top of uh, this rocky cave structure. So basically the walkable layer is on a, one of the um, upper height levels and our mm -hmm. uh, map is generated from ground level. So mm -hmm. basically um, when we initially uh, shipped Ashdale, um, it couldn't generate any information, it was, it was just um, doing the, the rocks on, on the, the low level. So in order to make a world map for Ashdale, we had to actually uh, draw with, with like what, what we um, call um, overlay, sort of like the, the, the textures that you can paint onto the ground in order to, um, like we do for roads and grass and that sort of thing. Um, we painted something that, that looks sort of like the overhead view of Ashdale onto a different map square and then dynamically pasted that into the world map over the spot where Ashdale is. Um, 
So that that's why it's, it wasn't quite as uh, graphically detailed as elsewhere. It was kind of the workaround we could do within the technical limitations uh, was to draw ourselves a picture of Ashdale from an overhead view, mm. paste that in, and um, to try to give a representation, which wasn't ideal, but it was the best we could do at the time. And yeah, that was added in at a later stage, I think, because we, I think we were hoping to try to get some um, engine improvements uh, for our initial release, um, which then we couldn't get the time for, so we had to settle for doing the best we could with the resources we had. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you for this little bit of insider development knowledge. I, yeah, I I'll hopefully be able to give you a little more. Little in, yeah, I'll hopefully give you more insider information as we get closer to things like Ashdale, because that's one that I actually worked on. This is this is um, deep history that I'm more researching right now. Mm -hmm. um, another question that I had. So you, this is around this time. Did also the task system come out? Kind of, as in like the, the 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 walker with the the balls on the ground that you follow. Oh right. Um, so the, the like the breadcrumb trail, I believe that. Yes. Yeah, I believe that came out with the task system, um, mm. or so certainly was 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 in use during the Lumbridge introductory tasks, uh, which was the tutorial that came after this one. Um, but okay. as I showed in that er that earlier slide, um, the unstable foundations. Uh, tutorial was also updated when the, the task system came out and that replaced the objective system um, and in the process of doing that um, it was updated to use those systems. I don't think it used the breadcrumb trail system. I think that only came in when you actually got to the main world. Mm. Okay. Cool. That was just a quick question. I see a lot of, I, I'm going to answer this off-topic question quickly as well. I see a lot of mentions about uh, uh, to ask us to increase our fund size um, what's to please yes. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but currently all our letters are images in our game, so it is not so simple to just say like um, increase the font size because that means we need to change a lot of images for all these letters and, and kind of different things. Um, so they're, they're not really scalable. That is something we need to uh, we need to work on. I know it's it's something that as as is clear in the chat today as well. Many of you want. Um, I'll pass it on as well. I'll make sure that gets done. But it is, it is, uh, it's not as simple to fix as as it may seem. Did I do a good job explaining it, Stu? Yeah, you did. did um, yeah. So our our font system is currently all bitmap fonts. Um, basically, a, a a sprite sheet with a set of cells for the uh, very limited number of uh, font sizes and types that we support. Um, it's not like we have true type fonts where you, we can just dynamically scale them. So uh, we're working on um, being able to. So we have the engine team working on, on interface um, scaling and a, a, um, a font system that, that's more dynamic and with the intention of uh, resolving that in the future. And that'll allow us to be able to scale, scale these things across the, all the different resolutions that you can have, deal with 4K monitors a lot better, that, that sort of thing. So, that, so they're going for a technology solution for that one. Um, but I do certainly yeah. agree that uh, particularly on um, player chat and MC chat, since the movements to the new interface system, the font is a lot harder to read. I personally struggle with it and, and it gives me headaches. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be very keen on, on that uh, being implemented. If, uh, yeah. even no. if the, in the form of an accessibility feature. Well, that that is this is one of the things that they they point out. But so yeah, it is like we've got we've got an ask for the the, the engine platform tech team uh, to 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 get that sorted for us. So that that is already uh, in our systems, and and I'll ask if we can. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll just inform that there's still a, a huge demand for that. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got that. Um, cool. And then the last one before we continue, and I think. I'm, I'm, I need to be very serious when I ask you this question, Stu, um, because I'm like I'm concerned for you at times. Okay. Um, and and you've got the death of millions of bunnies on your hands in <laughs> in RuneScape. Does that weigh down on your conscience? Not remotely. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, um, thrill. <laughs> this uh, was a yeah, question so that... from uh, Prime Point Thirteen, by the way. Just let me call that out as well. Yeah, that that is that is. Um, I mean, they they are really cute. I, I do actually feel feel a little bit bad. Um, but I did write uh, Turiel's dialogue, and T T and Turiel has absolutely no qualms about this. As far as he's concerned, they're vermin that should be eradicated. So. Um, okay. Uh, but, but yeah, that, that does tie into something I would like to try to address in the future is, is that our um, starting paths are currently um, 
It's basically a, a one a initial path and then it branches off and gives you a lot more freedom later on. But in that initial intersection point, um, you do have to do a bit of combat. And if you're not the sort of player who likes combat or um, don't particularly like killing rabbits, um, at the moment, you, um, you're stuck doing that and, unless you just ignore the tutorial entirely. So uh, if we had the opportunity to do another one, I'd be inclined to give a bit more freedom early on to go into more of a skilling route um, if that wasn't really really your deal. Um, there, there were some specific reasons why I went with, with rabbits for, for that, that, that first thing, um, but I'll, I'll probably talk about that at another stage when we get to the birth mm. parts. Yeah, no, makes sense. A uh, quick other question, which is in relation. Are you able to say uh, the name of the NPC again, whether it's Tyrell, Turiel? Um, because apparently some people uh, just learned how they were supposed to pronounce that name today. Oh, I mean, I could be wrong myself, um, but I say Turiel, okay. and, and that actually works out really well for me because he's doing the tu tutorial you know well, it sort of works i mean i, I imagine go, that, that there's some kind tutorial? of intention there yeah. right yeah no well i mean i don't it, i don't think that was intended for that reason because um like vanica was the guy who was the original tutorial slayer master and um uh Tyrell was just one of the, the, the slayer masters later on it wasn't until later we made um Tavli a, a starting zone so i yeah, I couldn't actually say why he had that name originally, or if it was meant to refer to anything in particular. And I could also be wrong in the pronunciation, but that's what what I've said and what I've heard other people say. So I'm hoping I'm getting it right. I mean, according to some other people in chat, it's referring to a Diablo reference or something like really? that from Blizzard. Oh, that's um, fascinating. So if someone in chat could explain that, uh, I, I'm I'm intrigued myself now. I've not played uh, Diablo myself, so please please right. educate me, and then I'll happily. Um, I'll happily tell Stu as well. I've got the producer say it in my head. Can you say it again, please, producer? Oh, it's the name. Okay, it's the it's a t tutorial. Uh, tutorial. Is that how you pronounce yeah. it? It's apparently the name of one of the angel characters there. Uh, in a uh, okay, what well, the Nephilim? Right. Cool. I mean, yes. I'm just gonna say <laughs> I, I I don't know enough about the Avalon to say anything about it. So, like, fair I know enough, the game. Enough what it is so i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it at that um, yeah if i remember continue, correctly it, oh yeah if i remember correctly it was mod bennett uh, who developed the slayer system back in the day that the slayer skill um he was also the guy who was creating the um or looking after the combat system at the time and he also moved over to uh mixscape and he was, he was one of the um initial uh trio of, th of three designers who, who who created it um he had, he had these this magnificently long blonde hair that he could keep very well maintained uh, anyway, so I imagine he probably named named Tyrael. So, so another question is, did he or did he not like Diablo? That might be a clue I, here. <laughs> I think it's very likely that, that he was he um, very much enjoyed Diablo, uh, knowing knowing him. Yes. Oh, all right. So, but that, so those stars align, I think. Keep keep it going, Stu. I like okay, it. Okay, so yeah, so the first cutscene. So after an establishing shot over your shoulder. We switch to the dragon's point of view as the dragon stalks towards Savant. Savant defends the doorway, slashing at the dragon with his sword. The dragon unleashes a fireball. Savant ducks and the fireball incinerates both the knight's squire and the ladder to the surface, leaving only a pile of bronze equipment. Savant unleashes a mighty blow upon the dragon. The dragon staggers backward. Your character literally leaps for joy as they watch the fight. At least he gives them something to do. The dragon moonwalks back into the cellar. Meanwhile, a goblin drops down the hole where the ladder used to be in search of shinies. The goblin begins digging through Savant's backpack. Something tells me this goblin is not long for this world. So a lot's just happened, and you might have felt a little uncertain what to do next, possibly even a little overwhelmed. A goblin's rooting around in the knight's backpack and sounds quite excited. There was a ladder, but it's gone now. The game wants us to talk to Savant, who's blocking the only exit. There's a ruddy great dragon, but it seems to have withdrawn for now. Someone has just died to dragon fire, but the squire wasn't introduced, let alone developed, so it doesn't have any emotional resonance. Narratively, the loss of Savant's squire does provide a void for us to fill and to establish a clearer sense of purpose, although we're still not sure why we're here or what's going on. There's some loot on the ground, though, and if there's one thing we know from adventure games, we should pick up everything that isn't nailed down. And if we can't, find a way to remove the nails. Fortunately, Savant concurs and wants you to retrieve his squire's, excuse me, 
Retrieve his squire's sword and armor, then use them to discourage the goblin from looting the knight's belongings. Now, there's quite an interesting example here, to me anyway, of how tweaking just one page of dialogue can tune the pacing and the player's understanding of their objective. In the top left, we have the original dialogue at the sequence. It's taken the approach of condensing several concepts into one page. It's quite similar to the sort of thing that I was advocating before, try to use the minimum amount of text you can. It's also using passive language. You can pick up the squire's kit and use them to defeat the goblin, but it's not clear that you should. Also, we've just introduced this exciting new dragon. Shouldn't that be your first priority? Has it been defeated? Is it still a threat? Should you pick up the equipment and attack the dragon yourself? Your goal isn't clear. In the bottom right is the same conversation, improved in a later version of this tutorial. Normally, I'd advocate being as brief as possible in a tutorial, but in this case, there's a fair number of new elements to pass. By splitting the subject over two pages, there's room to make it much clearer that the goblin is your immediate threat and that Savant is dealing with the dragon. It clarifies the objective. It also allows a brief acknowledgement of your role here, so it isn't such a lingering, unanswered question. Normally, less is more. But in this case, less was actually not enough. Sometimes you have to break your own rules to do the right thing for user flow. Any questions? Uh, yes. Well, first of all, I'm going to make a quick comment on what you, you said there, Stu. You talked about loot, and if it's kneeled down, take out the kneels <laughs> and then take yeah. the loot. Uh, Axis Tensor, uh, rightfully so, in my opinion, added the following comment. Uh, also, take the kneels. Don't leave them behind. Which Absolutely, I think is yes. a pretty good comment. Take everything yep, you can. Your construction. Yep. Uh, exactly. Uh, then the other question that I wrote down, which I find this is just genuinely this is like a cool question. I'm curious uh, about it again. Is uh, Sir Theodore Castle asked? Uh, that he says that he has heard of players who did the tutorial, and they can still speak to Servant at Theodore Castle, but apparently he's invisible for all all the players. Is this oh, a thing? Interesting. I wasn't aware that... of that actually. Um, when we finish up, I'm going to go have, have a look in Feldor Castle and uh, see if I can find him there. Um, yeah, I've I've I've, I've been doing this um, uh, purely by, by looking at, um, at footage rather than necessarily digging around in games. So that's an interesting one to look at. Um, yeah, I'd imagine that he probably can't access um, the lamps and things, or maybe he can. I don't know. I'll go have a look. Yeah, no, I, I was just curious if it was, and then his other question would be: Would it be possible to make him appear for everyone? Um, which is like a fancy follow-up question. Um... Uh, potentially. Um, I could have a dig around <laughs> and basically just see how much would break if I brought him back. Uh, I'd, imagine that the, I'd imagine that the cutscenes probably wouldn't work too well um, nowadays because they were built for the, the fixed screen. You know, like on, on the uh, interfaces here, there's a particular amount of space that they take up. Um, that's an issue we had on Mixscape quite a lot as well, was when we made the, the shift over to having this resizable interface, we built a lot of our cutscenes with particular NPCs waiting in the wings of what we thought was a defined stage. Um, mm. And then find, oh, well, actually, we can see these guys now. We have to do um, increase the sizes of our instances and move things further back and ac accommodate that. Um, so, yeah, it, it may not translate that well, but I'll, I'll have a look and, and see how feasible that is. Okay. Uh, I just find it funny that you instantly started talking about whether that would cause more bugs or, or everything else, because I'm Rubik in chat says as well. So, like, well, he just got removed from the game now to prevent any bugs, <laughs> which I find a, a common that is, uh, it's, it's, it's very much amongst the similar line. Um, you can just look at the two sides of it, of course, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, let me check. Um, yes, I'm going to ask this. We also need to round up. Uh, by the way, what's two? I've just seen now. Oh wow! So I don't already, know if there's gosh. a. It's it's already uh, five uh, seventeen hundred game time or five six pm for us. Um, I don't know if there is a natural breaking point coming up anytime soon. Uh, that that could be a quite a good way place to leave it because we uh, start looking at the the side interface from this point onwards. Um, backpack equipping, mm -hmm. combat, and so forth. That, that's kind of a continuous flow, which um, would be nice to do together. So um, how about we just um, jump to the end and just do some stew and a for the remainder? Cool. Or exactly. Then that's... Yeah, that, that was exactly what I was thinking. 
Um, that was a very cool question that I really did want to ask. Oh, yes, you're even bringing the image up. This is great. Um, this was a question from Ten Games. Uh, he asked a little bit further, but I find it was a really good question. So I wanted to save for, for a better moment, probably near the end. Uh, okay. And he asked, what sort of testing goes into the creation of a tutorial in RuneScape? Uh, the answer a lot. Um, so using when we did the birth of paths as an example, uh, you probably have heard previously that we um, run, we work in sprints where we do uh, testing of the features that are built within that sprint. Um, so if in that uh, two week cycle, we'll um, do the, like the, the, do the main the, development. Yeah, but build like the next path that I'm doing, for example, in that same sprints um, QA will we'll, we'll test that that path, and then we have to have it um, uh, feature complete, and then uh, the next sprint will you know continue uh, in that sort of iterative fashion, and then we'll do a a final pass at at, at the end to make, make sure it's all still stable. Um, so yeah, basically we do a lot a lot of testing as as, as we go along, um, and that structure honestly can be quite challenging when it comes to tutorials because. They often require a lot of tuning and refinement. Um, we'll be getting uh, f feedback, and um, you know, as, as we play through them, we find oh, we, we can. Th this part isn't all that intuitive, or you know, this this could work a bit better if it was structured that way. So, um, in some respects, I think that a waterfall approach might be actually be more effective here because we could iterate on it, make sure that it's playing the way we want it to before we, we then um, do a, a period of QA at the end. Um, but yeah, short answer: we do a lot of testing because. Um, it plugs into so many different systems in the game, and um, there's this uh, it, the different, particularly for something like the paths, where you could be doing a lot of different paths in any particular order. They they might um, cross contaminate in kind of interesting ways. Uh, so it means mm -hmm. a lot of testing. Yeah, and 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 the follow up question from from that person as well is: he would be interested if we would also test them with like new players or laps players or just our staff. Uh, to make sure that it works for them, do we do we have like those play tests as well? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, we we do focus testing. We do um, internal um, play tests with everyone um, who's interested, uh, and then we also keep an eye on um, uh, player feedback while it's live as as well, um, and tune tune things from the feedback we get there. So across the spectrum, I know particularly for um, Ashdale, we used an external um, focus testing company called Player Research in London. I remember going down to the focus testing sessions down there during that and um and i would they would bring uh people who never played played the, the game before watch them very closely it would record all the footage um and it, uh record what they were doing on the screens at, at the time so we, we could analyze that closely afterwards um we were in a like like a, a two-way mirror uh, secondary room so we could observe them uh, uh without them feeling like they're being observed um so yeah a very impressive setup so yeah we do focus testing too Mm -hmm. um, there you go. Ten Games is very happy that you answered this question. Uh, there are a lot of questions suddenly coming in, which I think is quite interesting. Oh, excellent! Uh, which is which is great. Uh, before we continue, I also want to let you know that Kuabe, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, uh, said that he just checked in at Velador Castle and that he can indeed confirm that uh, Servant is still there, which okay. is uh, which is interesting. So that that will be something fun for you to look at. Um, I'm just removing some of the questions I did ask as well. Um, at this time, is this is this also around the time that the uh, what was it? Sorry, uh, Asuma Aitisutori. I hope I'm pronouncing your name as well. You've got a beautiful name. It's quite difficult to pronounce. Is this also around the era that um, the instant demo got released? Uh, so, if I remember correctly, the instant demo was more around the learn the ropes period. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't think we had it running at this time. Okay. So it is from four. Yeah, this. um, I, th I think so. Uh, this is this is a long way back. See, this is trouble, unfortunately, with with doing the one off <laughs> questions. If I, if I don't know the answer for certain, uh, yeah, because I remember it, it being around, but I can't remember exactly when now. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. Second thoughts can't confirm. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. Um, like, um, I mean, I already see you almost like a librarian. You know a lot of questions about things in RuneScape. If I struggle, then I, you're one of my favorite people to ask questions uh, to. to. Um, so that is pretty cool. Uh, Kelsey asked, uh, surely learning the ropes was only around for two weeks? 
that is about right. Yeah, you're right. So, yeah. Um, so maybe it was unstable foundations. Um, all I can say is that um, none of the uh, videos I've, I've used for research had um, that uh, character, um, that that account creation as part of the flow. So, yeah, um, I'll 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 do some more research in between and, and see what I can find out. Okay. I'm just typing a quick message to get some double check something. Um, ah, I've, I've lost my flow for a brief second. This is very <laughs> frustrating. Um, there was a, another question that I think we can answer, or at least we can hopefully get some guidance to. Um, Chris Zange uh, says uh, sometimes when I use the legacy interface skin after I log in, I uh, am. I've switched to a world the legacy interface entirely. That is really frustrating. I can get that. Uh, it might be that you actually log into a legacy only world. That's th th the thing that pops into my head. But otherwise, it shouldn't happen. And if it happens, I would ask you to please submit a bug report. Um, yeah, that that, that's the most likely thing I would say is that uh, you're logging into a, a legacy world where it forces you into the, the, the legacy um, interface in combat. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, the, you, you don't that... normally get assigned to those automatically. They're usually something you have to opt into, and I believe it does mm -hmm. have a prompt on doing so. Yes. Uh, another question that I got is why is the icon a Sahar character? I hope I'm pronouncing <laughs> that correctly as well. Uh, you're not, but I'll be happy to correct you. Um, so See, how, the, how the, the, teach me how I'm supposed to pronounce it. Okay, so the the key thing with the Tsar is that the T is silent. Tsar, just the Tsar. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Czar, like, like the Tsar of Russia. Um, and English is difficult, you know. Yeah, um, well, I mean, this is, it's, a, it's a very complicated language. Um, I mean, if, even I, I don't think, get a lot of the pronunciation right. It's a creatorship, well, we don't do creatorships anymore, but at the time I inherited creatorship of the of the Tsar and the Tokar from uh, Maud Edom, who did the Elder Kiln quest. Um, and I was um, fortunately able to finish that um, off with the Brink of Extinction. But anyway, um, because of working on, on that as one of my first projects, um, I chose a um, Tokar Hox avatar as um, the one that I used on the forums. And then I've carried that over since to Twitter. Um, so yeah, the, the, these are, are the, the orange ones and the Tokar are the purple ones. Um, to clarify that without, exp um, without spoiling the lore of uh, what, what the origins of, of those races. Okay. Um, thank you for explaining that, Stu. <laughs> There's a, another question which I think is also just worth uh, answering quickly. Uh, Matsumi, our steward started changing quest rewards to lamps. Uh, are we still doing that? Um... Uh, this makes me sad. So um, this was something that I did back in TAP when TAP was still a thing. Um, there's no sign of TAP ever being a thing. So um, consequently, my time is allocated to the projects that I'm currently mm -hmm. assigned. Um, in, um, when a sprint ends, we're allowed a day to work on live bugs. Um, so I certainly love doing those. Um, but in those cases, they're you know, bug fixes that people have sent rather than um, things that are necessarily features. Um, so unfortunately, no, I can't see myself doing any more of those, I'm afraid. Cool. Uh, my question in, in return, though, uh, if there is a list, a list of quests that doesn't have those changed, uh, I would love to know which one that, or which quests those are. Uh, and I'll see what I can do. Um, yeah, I mean, if there, if there are things that are particularly... Because it is inconsistent. That's what I dislike yeah, about it. <laughs> yeah, especially if there are things that um, we know that certain lamps are impactful for you, um, then we can, you know, because they are, it's relatively a uh, quick job. It's ninja-sized to um, create create these, mm. these lamps. So um, uh, sending it to the ninja dojo would be a really good one. That's a way to um, get it uh, to... Um, and a part of the, of the team that is uh, positioned to to do those, those sorts of um, smaller um, impactful QL fixes. So that would be my recommendation. And Absolutely. if I'm ever allowed some opportunity to do something else, then I would be very happy to help them out if I could. You'll pick them up as well, yeah. No, because it's, yeah, it's like I, a... I, I used to work on Ninja and I really did, did enjoy work on Ninja. It was, it was good times. It's, it's those things that also help with... Um... Um, it helps the peers around as well, so they can just destroy them and safely do the quests and that kind of stuff yeah. in general, which I think is quite nice. Um, so yeah, we've got it's that. We, uh, we, we do it as standard for all new um, quests, but um, it's a matter of going back to older ones and retrofitting them as needed. Cool. Yes, absolutely. Um, I've got 
one more question written down. If there are any questions in particular about quest, and then I'll do the the final roundup bit uh, and and talk about the Q and A uh, that we'll have next week. Um, this is in relation a little bit to the the newest tutorial, uh, but Adami the Dragon um, kind of is a bit curious what your thoughts are on the on the newest tutorial. Uh, this is a returning player, and he is very happy uh, oh, that he could pick. Um, what what parts he would do? So I think he is referring to the to the paths kind of that you can go in. Um, this is something that is from your 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 cooker. Is it like this is one of your ideas, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, to to an extent. Um, I mean, it, it got kind kind of. So I started working on basically bringing back something similar to the the Lumbridge paths using the the path system. Uh, sorry, the Lumbridge task using the path system in mm -hmm. tab. And then that project then was inherited by the mobile team uh, when TAP was no longer a thing. Um, and I was working on retention projects. And then when I moved over to the mobile team to help them out with it at a later stage, um, they kind of had particular designs in mind. That's why we shifted towards um, starting you in Berthorpe, for example. Um, so it's, it's kind of got filtered through um, additional um, aims for the projects and, and so on, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, produces what we have at the moment. Yes. Cool. Thank you I, very much. What was, what, was the, what was the original question? Did I even answer it? <laughs> I don't know. It was it was like um, it, it was what were your opinions on on this system in general, kind of. But I okay. thought I'd, I'd change um, the question a little bit because you made it, kind of. Okay. Yeah. No. That that's fair enough. I mean, I, I didn't actually make the system. Uh, the the path, the achievement path system was something that were, um, mod. I can't recall if it was Mod Ashes or Mod Doctor. Uh, mod Doctor started on the on the cheaper system initially. Then myself and Mod Ashes came over and helped. Uh, with finishing it off. So I'm not sure where the path necessarily came in, uh, but basically it was the system that um, let us chain together a series of achievements and there was a way that we could introduce players to, con to content that way. And at the time it was very underused um, and I, I saw the appeal and the um, potential of it from, for tutorialization. So I, I tried and, and also for just helping you find um, particular content like um, quest series or helping you f uh, figure out how to get to Prithinus or to unlock ancient curses or all these sorts of things and creating a suite of paths that I, I could put together quite simply by just chaining existing achievements together and then it became more of a tutorial thing as well. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you very much for that answer as well, too. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the, I mean, we tried. We wanted to, to round up a little bit earlier. We're still getting to the to the one and a half hour stream, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll 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 finish with the questions. Um, so, to repeat it again, I said there are still a lot of questions questions in chat. I'm seeing those. They are some of them are about quest, some of them are about other content, about tap, about future content, about uh, the uh, the beach. Uh, we I saw something about um, the summer package. Uh, all those things. We're, I'm going to create a thread uh, on Reddit and we'll also share it on Twitter and Facebook where we're going to gather all your questions and we'll be having a Q&A uh, next week on this streaming slot from 5pm BST or 1600 game time. So make sure to submit your questions in there. Uh, we will have, uh, I know for certain, uh, at least to my knowledge, uh, Mod Mike or Mod Mick, I don't know whether what way exactly I have to pronounce it, will be on there um, what Warden is looking. I think we've asked if Warden wants to be on it as well, uh, but I don't know what his schedule is enough if he has all the meeting that he already needs to attend. Um, so we should be able to answer some cool questions, I think. Uh, so please uh, put, submit your questions there. We'll pick up the, the questions and we'll try and ask as many of those during that Q&A. Um, we will be back next Tuesday, uh, Tuesday where we would usually have those live streams. We'll be back with Stu. Uh, we're going to continue talking about this tutorial, um, which will be great. Um, I'll also double check if we will put it on the forum, uh, the Lady Sizzle. Um, I don't know that because we also try and uh, collate it in a couple of places, uh, but I can mention it. We'll see where it goes. So stay tuned for that. That will go out in probably like 15, 20 minutes uh, where we'll start asking for those questions. Um, then before we go, of course, I'll remind you of the Twitch Prime loot, uh, which is 20 Treasure Hunter keys, 400 ring coins, and 80 hearts of ice. So if you haven't, make sure to claim that. It's quite nice. 
use the Twitch Prime sub on one of your favorite content creators as well. Don't use it on us. We're fine. Use it for your favorite content creators. Very important. And um, if you don't get it within two days, make sure to just go to the page, revisit the page and make sure it is linked as well. That's what I'm going to say. A lot of people are saying that they are very happy for the stream as always too. Okay. Um, and the beard was looking pretty good as well. <laughs> Thank you. So that's, that's, that's equally important. Uh, so we'll see you all on Tuesday. Look after yourselves and talk scenes. See you then next time.